Google Bard, ChatGPT. What do you want? What are you gonna decide? Pick. It's kinda hard if you don't really know, so I'm gonna tell you everything that I can to help you pick between which of these to use. And maybe you might be using both. First of all, what does Google Bard have on ChatGPT in the first place? You know, ChatGPT has been around since November. It's late to the game. What even does it have in general on this thing that's already had multiple iterations? Well, first and foremost, as one article put it, if ChatGPT is your crazy Uncle Leo, I'm not making this up by the way, Google Bard is your goody two-shoes Aunt Martha. This is seriously what people put on the internet, I swear. And that's because ChatGPT seems to be a little bit more creative. And from what I can tell, Google Bard is a little boring. I mean, also, like if you just go to the bottom of Google Bard, you'll notice Bard may display inaccurate or offensive information that doesn't represent Google's views. Like it's just trying to hedge the whole time. And it's just interesting to me that this competition kind of comes down to ChatGPT has a bigger feature set and Google Bard has a couple small things that ChatGPT doesn't have, but they don't really work the same. There's a couple different categories you can kind of break down the way that ChatGPT and Google Bard's competition go at each other. Number one is content generation. Now, when we look at Google Bard, if I just write, write three tweets that are original platitudes on stoicism, we get a couple different options and we do have something different than ChatGPT where we have three different example tweets in three different drafts. However, it's not as able to mimic styles as ChatGPT, so it can output things. But for example, if I say make the tone quippy like Tony Stark, Google Bard does a decent job, but it doesn't do a, an amazing job of making things from a content creation standpoint. And part of content creation is especially the cool features that like ChatGPT can basically mimic styles and can take inputs and give outputs. Like for example, I can take Bard and if I reset this chat and say, write me five tweets based on this text below, it isn't gonna do as good of a job as ChatGPT would. The summarization capabilities and content creation just aren't quite there. However, I will say the speed at which ChatGPT puts out this kind of thing on their most recent model, GPT-4, is a lot slower. So if I do write me five tweets based on the text below, the output speed is going to be a little bit slower. And not to mention, if we think about it contextually, Bard gave three options in the time that ChatGPT-4, you know, did this. And I'm still waiting. Da 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 Okay, where are we there yet? 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 Yeah, my point. It just takes longer uh, with the newest model. And Bard had three options, but it's still a solid output, and it ends up having a more creative flair to it that you're just not seeing in Bard, which I'm sure is just because ChatGPT has done a better job of working on their product to make it more creative and Google's not necessarily trying to make it more creative. Another way that ChatGPT is winning in the content creation space is that you got an API connection with ChatGPT. Like I can have automations running with make.com and Zapier to have things pumping content out consistently. Whereas there's no, it's not really a lot of people talking about Google Bard and having an a API yet as a time of recording this video on like March 25th, 2023, but I'm sure it'll get there. And I'm sure there will be API connections eventually, or I mean, maybe not. Now there was a little bit of a weird thing coming next, which is kind of the search engine integration. So Google Bard has the ability to, anytime you put in a prompt, you can search something related to what was brought up. However, Bing is just integrated with ChatGPT now. Like the new Bing is what they're calling it. Like sign into chat. Like this is just integrated into your experience once you have access to the new Bing. Now I do have access to the new Bing and it's insanely cool that I can ask it any question, make it more creative, make it more precise. And it's basically ChatGPT integrated with a search engine. So what are the top three ways to grow on Twitter? And I'm getting an interactive experience with the search engine which is pretty sick. And we have different references to where it came from, which is awesome. Now it's not something you're natively getting within JetGPT, but you're getting it within the new Bing. And it's very interesting to see Bing become the cool kid on the block for the first time in ever. We hope that Google is gonna catch up with this search engine integration soon, but 
you know, we don't know when it's going to happen and we can't promise it's going to happen. So right now, Bing's winning and so is ChatGPT in that sense, which just is weird to say out loud. Now, when it comes to plagiarism, Google Bard is behind in the sense that it literally has no mechanisms in place. And supposedly OpenAI is trying to improve what originally was like a 26% classification of AI written text versus nine of like human text that it threw in there. It's trying to do better at it, but I don't know if any of these tools are going to be great at it at all. So I wouldn't like, you know, place your bets on, okay, this is just not going to be plagiarized whatsoever when I'm trying to write an essay for it. That's something to point out for both of these. And then when it comes to customer service automation, people are making chatbots. People are integrating ChatGPT into their websites now. And I think that's awesome. I think that since the API is relatively cheap, people are able to essentially outsource some work for pretty low prices. And for those of the, us that are like questioning, like, oh, why are you making this change without knowing the long-term costs? I think we can kind of squelch those rumors of it being a bad idea because ChatGPT's API integration has been relatively similar in pricing and at least cheap. They haven't had to ramp it up. Uh, and that is the kind of thing that Google Bard obviously doesn't have at all whatsoever. And we're not even sure whether they want to move into that space of having the API integration allow for these integrated chatbots into websites. I know for a fact that Hints.so, which sponsors this channel, has implemented the GPT OpenAI API connection for parsing their data. And it's like they're making their entire app sort of predicated on this natural language processing through ChatGPT. So it already has great applications using their product right into their system. So like, yeah, sure, let's let's totally be excited about what it can do for customer service and automation. Now, when it comes to pricing, it's no secret. ChatGPT Pro, like me just showing you ChatGPT 4, cost me $20 a month. I'm fine with it. It's done wonders for me at work and outside of work for Rise Productive. Like, fine, I don't, I don't care. But Google Bard's free. Like, it's completely free. You can use it unlimited on that plan. And I will say from like a, a failure standpoint and like an uptime standpoint, Google Bard has been flawless and not had any errors for me. This might be just my own thing, but it costs no money and has had no errors. So once you get on that Google Bard free vibe, you're going to enjoy it a little bit more than you did with ChatGPT crashing all the time. I mean, the speed on it is much slower for GPT-4. To stop making fun of ChatGPT though, 3.5 turbo, which is like the default version, is is this fast. So like, it's pretty quick. I, I'm just saying, let's not like absolutely destroy ChatGPT's speed. But the $20 a month obviously is a killer for some people. And if Google Bard can provide an 80% level product with like no crashing for free, I'm sure a lot of people are gonna settle for that. And Google's got the money to just bleed, so it can keep it free probably for a while. Overall, the bottom line from what I'm seeing is that ChatGPT4 does a better job, and even 3.5 does a better job of sort of working through different prompts, different iterations of prompts, being a more interactive experience. The new Bing is very good. It's integrated even with the ads that are on the Bing platform, and Google's just a little bit behind, and they're not trying to be as loud about it. They're not trying to be as you know, fun as your crazy Uncle Steve. They're just trying to put out something there that people are gonna be okay with and not poke the bear per se. And for me, I think that's an okay move. I do think they need to catch up in some ways to what Microsoft and OpenAI are doing. But overall, Google Bard's pretty all right. I would give it a shot. And I would also give this a shot on how to improve your productivity even more.